Akar heading to Skori Island. Yeah, the boat, the ferry goes every so often. With our tour guide, Mr. Ali. He's a flea blue, field blue maniac. <laughs> two and two, hand in hand. Yeah. A harbor is a harbor like any other place. There's a lot of people on this boat going to the Gori Island. Eh? Yeah, I know a few Sangeetas. What's that doing over here? <laughs> Rocking and rolling. <laughs> There's the island. There's the monument. The Igori monument. I think that's the slave house. Those are the slave houses there. I love the heart there. Oh, yeah. All the stuff coming in from the mainland, the island, as we disembark. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we arrived on Igori Island on a beer boat. <laughs> oh, look at that. Come on, stop, stop. Musée de la Mer. A very interesting looking tree. Gotta find out about him. Statue of the Virgin Mary dedicated to all the doctors and pharmacists and nurses who died. Over here. 21 names of the doctors who were affected by yellow fever while helping on the island. And the hospital was over there. And uh, to contain it, the doctors who died all of a sudden due to yellow fever, they went down the entire hospital to contain the virus. That's the island's football ground and all of a sudden the baba tree which is there in the middle sprung up and it's illegal to cut it. And also there's a spiritual and religious belief system that there's a lovely spirit living inside it. And uh, because they live for 1,500 years so they, in some old villages they'll actually have a hole in it and they put a newborn baby in, in that hole to bless the baby and also if the uh, spirit, when a person dies, they put the person back in there as uh, blessing them for the next life. This is a neem tree. Neem tree, exactly, yes. This is the neem tree. Oh, it's a neem tree. You have seen yeah. it famous in India, huh? Yeah. Very famous, yeah. And very also good. Also, we use it for, for, for malaria. Yeah. Yes. They use it in toothpaste and... Yes, they use it for toothpaste, seven leaves. You know, you just boil some water, you infuse seven leaves inside, you know, you wait five minutes and you drink the bubble. The name tricks. Down one of the streets. The basketball park. And there's a boobab tree there as well. Statue of Liberation Slaves. Wow. The drums, the chamber, they used to call it, used to be a method of communication between villages by the slaves. And then uh, the Americans found out about it and banned it. And that actually was quite instrumental in, in the uh, method of songs that arise in uh, America, South, South of America, but the drums are available and you find the beats in the Caribbean. We're now gonna go inside here. So you can see all the gospel singing and all the other kinds of singing and other instruments became an evolutionary point in American music. Entering the slave house. 
This house was originally built by the Dutch in 1776 and it was the latest left the Ministry of Culture of Senegal decided to keep it as an example. But it was not the only state house around the island because they used to have money. Now that was from over there. Okay, everybody say this used to be called the uh, Wayne Mode. Okay, Wayne has volumes. The reason was that in this room, back in the scary days, they used to have a big scale which was located exactly here. Okay? So that's why they decided not to paint this area. And the scale which was here was used to weigh all the bad slaves who used to come to this house. And the reason why they were weighing that is to see if there were 60 kilograms or not. Okay? Because 60 kilograms was the minimum body weight required for a man to be qualified to be sold overseas. So if there were 60 kilograms and up, they were automatically qualified to go. But if they were below 60 kilograms, they used to keep them in a special cell in this house called the temporary feeding cell. Yeah? And they used to keep them in that cell for three months, just to feed them. That way they can get a maximum of weight in a minimum of time. Now women were selected depending on their ages and also their ability to have children. Concerning young girls, their prices were depending on their virginity. Their virginity was very expensive. In fact, all the young girls who used to come to this house, they used to first check them in here to see if they were virgins or not. Now, if they noticed that they were virgins, they had a special cell here reserved for nothing but a virgin young girl. I'll show it to you. But if they were non virgins, they used to just keep them in the woman's cell and sell them like regular women. Okay? This is one of the slave rooms, eh? It's recording, so you can come yeah. and take. How grim is that? They would trade children for a, for a bit of fabric. Yes. Oh, fabric. Awful. Yeah, they also had two more opposites. They were reserved for the men to this like Because there were more men coming here than anybody else, so they reserved five cells for them. Okay. It was a typical cell here reserved to the men. Okay. And in this very small cell, they used to pack back in the slavery days between 15 to 20 men in chains. Okay. So minimum 15, maximum 20. This is where the children were kept in the ages of 4 and 12. As much as 15 or more in here. All the way down there as well. This used to be full of children. Grim, eh? And the other side were ladies. Not much light in here, right? Huh? Yeah. Probably they have like um, electricity. Yeah. Alright everybody, this one the cell reserved to the young girls. Especially the virgins. Remember I was telling at the beginning that all the young girls who used to come to this house, they used to first check them over there in the waiting room to see if they were virgins or not. Now if they noticed that they were virgins, that's where they used to keep them. Because their prices were depending on their virginity. And the second reason was, remember, upstairs was the guest house. Okay? So just big. a big hole that was big and also linked with a pipe that used to go straight out like this to the ocean. Now there's two big questions. Why a toilet in this cell and also why a toilet at the entrance? Because the toilet guests decide to come down to pick some of those girls. They were always clean to be able to follow them without any problems. Okay? Compared to the men over there in the men's cell who used to do anything they had to do right there on the floor. They used to and pick the, the virgin girls the from cells, those windows sometimes there. Sometimes they were forced to sit on it. So this is a passageway it's from where the white folks used to look at the virgin girls and choose the women that they wanted. And the funny thing is that the virgin girls 
would then become free if they fell pregnant and they could have their western influenced kids on the island these are called senoras kind of like senoras and mulaharas of some kind of a spanish name so you had like the anglo indians in india you had the uh, i guess the anglo negroes so mulatto female were called so mulatras and the mulatto male mulatras so that's the difference between you know here and the other side so the Anglo Indians of India and the Mulatras of Africa, Euro Africa. Cell called the temporary feeding cell. So it's in this cell where they used to keep all the male slaves who were checked over there in the wing room and who were below 60 kilograms. Okay? And they used to keep them in here for three months just to feed them. And while they were in this cell, they were eating by force. Whether they like it or not, they were forced to eat. That way they can gain a maximum of weight in a minimum of time. And the man said, as you can notice, if you go inside, you only can pan or sit down. So all the slaves who were trying to bring some trouble in this house, like fighting in the cell, that's where they used to keep them. Also, the concern was not how many slaves they used to keep in here for punishment. The problem used to be how to close the iron and wooden door wow. which used to be here. How many would they put in here? Sometimes they had so many slaves to punish that they had problems to close the door, so they had to force it. Oh. And no light, huh? Okay. But the punishment used to last only one day, two days at the most, three days of punishment. No I light. Was just no light. So oh, Nelson Mandela was here. Oh, he went inside here for 10 minutes and when he came out, his eyes were red and he said it reminded him of Robben Island. Bless you Mr. Mandela for teaching us. These used to be windows. The women's cell. More spacious, huh? This is the biggest cell in this house. Also, all the young girls who are checked and who are not virgins or not virgins anymore, they also used to take them in here to serve their life. You can also notice that the ceiling was renovated. So, this was done a few years ago. And the reason why they decided to renovate it was that the Ministry of Culture of Senegal wanted to turn this woman's cell here into one exhibition room for the shuttles. And funds, you know, all those items they used to use back in the early days. But this was too small for that, so they finally decided to put the exhibition room upstairs at the ESR. Okay? So we'll have a chance to go up. In which the English uh, European people would go and choose the virgin girls, and then uh, they would go upstairs to the rooms. And the toilet you can see is the far end of the door. And that was because the uh, sea breeze would just blow the smells right, away so this is where, this is where everything is. happened okay. the door that you see often here in front of you is called the door of no return of what? no return the door this of no the return door of no return and the reason why they call it the door of no return was that back in the slavery days once the slaves put one step out they never come back again never so all the slaves who were sold in this house, they were living from this door. Also, all the sick and agonizing slaves thrown from this house to the sharks, they were also thrown from that door. Now, when came the time to leave, all the slaves were getting online, and one by one, they used to go to the boats. But back in those days, the boats couldn't get very close to the door because of the rocks. So if you get closer to the door, you'll notice many, many big black rocks called the basalt between the door and the wall. Bless you. Thank you. So they decided to make back then some type of bridge. A long bridge made with this type of food up here called the pangu. That way the slaves were able to walk one by one and reach the boats. Also, anytime the slaves were going to the boats, the security guards used to be always standing one side to another of the wooden bridge. The reason was that anytime the slaves were going to the boats, some of them preferred to commit suicide by just jumping in the water rather than going to the boats. 
and if they do that they're going to drag many slaves with them because they were linked by the chains so to avoid that the security guards won't hesitate to shoot and kill the slaves who wanted to kill himself that way they can save the other one from drowning okay also the slave trade lasted 312 years on this island because it was started by the portuguese in 1536 and it was abolished here by the French in 1848. So 1536 up to 1848, 312 years. So the Portuguese started, then the Dutch took over, then the British, and finally the French. And history approximated in those 312 years that 20 million slaves transited all the way from the western coast of Africa to go either in North America, in the Caribbean, South America, and Europe. And about six millions of them never made it. Okay, they died of sickness, bad treatments, sinking boats, epidemics. So around 14 million was spread between North America, Caribbean, South America, and Europe. Also, this was not the only slavery house around the island. Like I was telling at the beginning, this was the latest slave house built on this island, also the most organized one. So that's the reason why history and the Ministry of Culture of Senegal decided to keep it as an example. But all the houses built alongside the water on this island, all of them were used as slave houses, either by the Portuguese or the Dutch or the British or the French. So history counted about 28 legal slave houses around this island. And I mean by legal slave houses controlled by the whites, because they also used to have many, many illegal slave houses controlled by the mix, the senoras and mulatras, also involved in the slave trade, but in a lower level. Now you can just imagine in 312 years how the traffic was around this island. Okay? And they're holding cells, and they will come through here. And this will be the walk to the door of no return. They'll be in their chains, fear. And through here they'll have a ramp leading to the boat. And that way is the Americas. where the guest house was which they've made into a museum all right come inside everybody it was the guest house back in the seven days but today it is turned into one exhibition room okay all these items that you see here and there were found in this house and used back in the days for example this one here was for the neck especially is on water this was for the wrists, these ones too. This one here was for the ankles. For example, for two slaves, they used to put one in one slave leg and the other one on the other slave leg. That way no one can do any movement without the other. And put the tribes into war. And the tribe which won the war used to keep the defeated tribe prisoner. They also used to have the island rule. I was in Asia so too by the British. The in Dutch. contact with the tribal chiefs along the coast, collect the prisoners from the tribal wars and bring them to this island and sell them as slaves. Catholic missionaries used to do that, unfortunately. Between 300 and 350 slaves in one time. And this is the way the slaves were arranged in the boat for the voyage. And when the boat was full, that's the way it was with them. Okay? So they were all laying down in chains one to another, just packing them like sardines. Okay, so all that area was concerned by the European slave trade. Okay, and along that western coast of Africa, they used to have so many party centers. Okay, for example, only in Senegal, we had Gore Island and San Luis in the north. In the Gambia, in the south, they had James Island. Okay? In Ghana, they had the Elmina Fort and Cape Coast. In Benin, they had Ruda and Alada. In Nigeria, they had Lagos and Badagi. Also in Angola, in the south, they had Luanda and Luango.
So, uh, yeah, like that's not why What's the question blacks, again? So why no blacks. blacks in the Middle East? Even though the slave trade started in the 7th century. Countries about the slave trade. Why? Why no blacks in the Middle East? Never thought about it. There is. Yes. I don't Many know. people don't even think about it. I mean, there's a sad story behind it. The reason was that the Arabs were castrating their male slaves. Ah. Okay, for two reasons. Castrating. You know, you want to castrate no. You don't know about it? Not cut it. I mean, back then they were not cut it. They were just pounding the nuts. That's it. I was sorry for going into the details, but I just wanted to know. Bless you. Okay? For two reasons. Okay, the Arabs were nomad. They were also big feathers. So to avoid something to happen in their bag with their wives or with their women, to avoid a dishonor, they used to just castrate those messages. And the second big problem with the Arab slave is that for the woman slave to have babies, they have to be impregnated by the masters. Okay? So men couldn't have babies, women also couldn't have babies. So along the years and the centuries, the black population just disappeared. So that's why nowadays the Middle East is not like America or Colombia. Because men couldn't have babies, women couldn't have babies. And that is the uh, door of no return, where the guys is coming out from. And that's where the boats would be. This is just one of the 300 houses on the island. That looks like the uh, bottom of the fort. Let's go show you a diagram of it now. That's the diagram of the fort. Oh, yeah. wow. So where are we here then? So I guess this is the bay. So we're over here. Maybe oh, here or here. here. Yeah. So that was 1728. So that was in the middle of the 300 years mm -hmm. of slave trade. All of these were slave houses and they now got people residential apartments and walking through the village another baobab tree baobab people's homes sweet I love these intersections. Looks like a church or a church in Western Africa in 1830. St. Charles Church. Moving down these aisles of rocky stones. Oh, look at this! <laughs> They're having fun. <laughs> that looks like the mosque. And that's an artificial tree. Artificial, yeah. <laughs> telecommunications. Mainland. Right now, electricity and water comes from the mainland. But they have two huge generators. Alright everybody, so this is the but island you know what mosque, I mean? the okay? feeling, that yeah. yellow building, and as you can notice it doesn't look like a mosque, yeah. Yeah. and it also doesn't have a minaret. The reason was that that was not built as a mosque, that was built as a small chapel, and it used to belong to the black workers, not the island very okay? But the fans realized that, so the fans realized that among the black workers who were here working for them, there were more Muslims than Christians. So to hold them on the island, they decided to turn that chapel into a mosque. And up to today, it's still the island mosque. Gallery of sand painting. Wow. All right, come inside, everybody. Don't touch. <laughs> <laughs> wow. These are beautiful. All from sand. Everybody's in the back of the chicken. They're all natural from Senegal. Voilà, comme ça, je vais vous donner l'origine pour prendre photo en même temps filmé. So he's going to give you the origin of this sand. So he's going to take pictures of it. Pour commencer, vous avez là le sable blanc, c'est la petite corde. Ça vient de Sali. So that dry sand is from Sali. Sali is about 85 kilometers southwest of Dakar, sand from the beach. Là, c'est les termitières. On les trouve un peu partout à l'intérieur du pays. Le yellow sand est de termite mouth, dans le centre de Sahara. Le orange sand est de Sahara. 
Le sable ferreux, c'est dans le nord du pays, sous les mineurs de Galbe en Mauritanie. And that iron is sand is from the iron mines of Galbe in Mauritanie. It's a country in the north of Senegal, and they do have a lot of iron mining. De là, c'est les mangroves, c'est dans la ville Gambie, vers les Sénégal, donc sur les pâtes de Là, c'est la terrible. La terrible, c'est les pays de la terre rouge. C'est comme Mali, Niger, Burkina, Soudan, Tchad. Le gris est dans le sud du pays, c'est un casement, plus précisément au Cap Sécurité. Là, c'est les dunes de la Corose. Donc, so between the lake and the Atlantic Ocean, they do have a big desert where people can run canals, go by the dunes, or run four by fours, or quads to get all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. And the blue are the So the blue they use is extracted from the baobab tree. I was explaining to you. So it's the sap of that baobab that they extract and mix it with arabic oil, which is also coming from another tree for the acacia. Yes, so, so they mix together and use it as well. And it's going to make a small demonstration for you to show you how these paintings happen. Et comme vous l'avez vu, c'est une technique que nous avons appris à l'école des arts à Dakar. Clair, ça vient toujours un défi foncé à plus clair. Comme ça, les couleurs, on ne les bouge pas, c'est seulement toujours à l'inspiration de la piste. Comme ça, je secoue le tableau, je verse le sedan et vous l'avez comme vous êtes final. C'est ça. Beautiful. Thank you. Le sound never come off once it's done. Et, si, si vous en voulez aussi des souvenirs, c'est selon la dimension qu'on les vend. On the way up to the monument, you see this cattle farm, chickens, ducks, goats, and cows. And there's a little kitty catty. Oh, I love them. Yes, the good friends are painting. Lame, lined with baobab trees. And we're on top of the small hill, and there's the monument, and the wood carvers are at work. Wow, look at that. Whew. These are amazing. All right, everybody, so now we are on the big fort. And this is the fort of Saint Michel. And it was built by the French between 1898 up to 1902. Okay. And these cannons that you see here, they were placed here between 1907 up to 1937. They were all the way in France, in a country called Angoulême, and transported all the way to the piece by piece. And these cannons used to be 240 millimeter caliber, 
they were also able to hit any target within a range of 14 kilometers. They, they were used only once in the war. They sank a British commercial boat. The guns of Navarone in the movie was filmed over here, parts of it. The French destroyed this before they left the island so that the armies of Senegal could never use it again. Two entrances to the bunkers on top of the island and the fort. And local inhabitants, which you find anywhere on this planet. Toot toot! <laughs> Look at him. Oh, what did he pick up? Some stick of salt. More sand work. And they farm the goats for the goat milk, which they used to drink. The monument on this gory island looks like a sail. And uh, we call it the uh, Boys of Arab of Senegal, of, of Goris Island. Some kind of a gun and a bunker entrance. Now I want to see the cows here. Now that is a cow. It's yeah. got a hump. As my good buddy Jonathan said, what were they of? Aurochs, huh? Descendants of Aurochs. And the Indian Aurochs descended from hump back like that. And the European ones, yeah, it does look like an Auroch. A-U-R-O-C-H. And the European ones don't have that much of a hump on their back. But these are very much like the Indian cows. But the descendants from the Indian Auroch. Local fun, everybody wants to play on the swing. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Even the big people. <laughs> and now it's time to go to the village. There are a few of them around here actually. Hey sweetheart. How are you? Hey. How are you? How are you? Meow. How are you? What? I don't have anything for you. What about you? And you? And you? How many of you here? Yeah, your whole family around the place. Yeah. The area which was burnt down due to the uh, yellow fever epidemic and where the doctors had all died who were looking after people on the island. And that's why they built that uh, missionary statue. And here's the uh, football ground and the famous baobab tree that sprouted in the middle of it. <laughs> Look at them! Hey, mommy! Hey, mommy! Look at them! Oh, man! Cute as heck! Wow! Look at all the colors! You are not like anything, eh? What a nice hairstyle. This is a small marketplace on the island. Ball over there. Amazing. I love this statue this guy just sold me. What is this statue called? This is Amorous. Man and woman. Love. Love. Meaning of love. Where is our painting? Excuse me. Excuse me. I got this here. Thank you to Alion for our oh, great food as well. Eh? I love the colors. To think this was one time 
shark infested. There's humans were thrown overboard. What a glorious day! Coming to an end. Time to head back on the beer wagon. Beautiful tour comes to an end. Wonderful. Revolutionary Monument Africa. This is the African Renaissance Monument. And Renaissance means rebirth. Okay, in fact. So this symbolizes the rebirth of Africa. This was started in 2002 and finished in 2010. And inaugurated on April 4, 2010, during the 50th years of our independence. Okay? And the statue itself represents a family coming out of the darkness of the volcano. And the darkness of the volcano symbolizes all the struggle, suffering that the Africans have been going through from slavery time to colonization time. Okay, now they're coming out of that darkness to see the light. And that's the reason why when they jump up to the light, you can notice that the child is pointing west to the ocean. And the ocean represents the future. Built by the North Koreans for close to 22 million US dollars in a country which is like 90% or more Muslim. There's a lot of conflict on that. And imagine the North Koreans came here for the first time, built it, why? Because it was cheapest. And then they left in 2011. 204 steps, supposed to be one for each country. Brilliant. Pointing to the west, I wonder why. And he said, because the future of freedom is in the water and the ocean. That's why it points to the west. That's the symbolism. Oh, if this was Philadelphia, I'd be okay! Wow. The lighthouse is the second highest lighthouse in the world, in Africa. That's a volcano and an old one. And uh, this is also a volcano rock. A severe foundation. The man alone weighs a hundred tons. And uh, bronze and copper. 65, 35. Piece by piece brought and built from Pyongyang. And uh, amazing, but a lot of contradictions. And so you look at your beautiful eyes. Hey, look at you. Wanna come back with me? Come back to Dubai. Hey, wanna come back to Dubai with me? Wow. Well, <laughs> it's in the fruit market. Look at this gorgeous fruit. They will. Great stuff. I love this place. The local Senegal Dakar coffee. Cafe Tuba. Awesome, man. And is it you have it with lime, is it? Yeah. Okay, so that's yours. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. What is how do you say thank you? Jerry Jeff. Jerry Jeff. I have a cat called Jeff Jeff. Oh, okay. <laughs>